What's up, my LS crazed amigos? It's your boy Terry speaking from the garage shop once again. Here to offer you some more big bang for your buck product and info. I got an email from a guy named Giuseppe, LS crazed amigo, and he wanted to know, Terry, how'd you go about hooking up your check engine light, you know, uh, to work with your LS engine? I'm glad he asked that question because I figured I might as well do a clip on it. Possibly try to help him out. Possibly try to help a lot of other people out. They have the same question. So. Um, First thing you gotta do is, I got two of my cars here, and they're similar, but a little different when it comes to hooking up the check engine light, and I'm gonna show you a couple of ways which I went about doing it. So first thing we need to do is step in the car and have a little chat. So let's go. Now, GM, they made several different types of dashboards. This is a 71 Chevelle. So now if I was to take this instrument cluster out, there would be a circuit board. Now. The circuit board would supply a 12 volt signal that would work all of the devices. It would work the amp gauge, it would work the speedometer, well not speedometer, the RPM gauge would supply power to the clock and to all the other uh, what's called gauges or either idiot lights. Now that's one type of the dashboard that they have and we're going to talk about the other type of dashboard. So I got that particular dashboard with the circuit board in the back. So to hook, now I don't know if you can see this, but right here is where it's not it's not hooked up yet but i'm going to hook it up right here is where my oil idiot light would be all right so that's where i'm going to have it turned on when i'm going to turn whenever i turn the engine on in the crank position in the on position i want that to light up and that's going to be my trouble code but then go out so that's what we're going to work on we're going to work that out now back in 71 that was this little you can't see it right now because it's not on but it's going to be on soon it, it was an oil pressure gauge i'm sorry oil pressure light idiot light if you want whatever now the purpose of that light was if you had low oil in your car or either something else it would tell you what was going on but by the time that light come on damage is pretty much already done so like i said everyone knows this about me and i like using the stock gauges and some lights but this was an oil pressure light and i'm not going to use that why because i have an oil pressure gauge here and i have a fuel pressure gauge to me, if you have an LS, if you install an LS, these are two gauges outside of the stock dashboard that you should always have. That's, that's my opinion, an oil pressure and a fuel pressure. But there's oil pressure light here. I'm not gonna, don't, I'm gonna use that as my check engine light. Now, the way to do it is, all you gotta do is on your harness, if, if, uh, if you can find the oil pressure send, the, the, the little wire, that goes to the sending unit all you got to do is tie it in to your computer mill now a mill on the computer harness on the ls computer harness it's a mil that stands for malfunctioning indicator light not milf dirty perverts it's a mill malfunctioning indicator light so that tells a trouble code that tells you that that sends a little signal saying okay fine there's a problem there's a trouble code and i'm going to have it light this particular light right here because i'm not using it it's not used so i'm going to hook it up i'm going to show you how to do it and like i said it's very simple all you got to do is find the the um the light the i'm sorry the wire to your oil pressure sending unit which you're not going to be using because you don't have the 350 or 307 engine that came in here so all i did was take that wire tied into my mill and remember there's a 12 volt signal coming in off of the back of that circuit board so it's pretty much a done deal okay so once i put the car in the on position light comes on so now this is not a check oil light like how it used to be or check engine light this is more of a check computer light and once this comes on when the car's in you know like running then you know to check your computer but so now i'm going to start the car up and it should go right off Now, if I get a code, if I have a code, that light will come on and stay on. But right now, I have no codes, and that's a cool way to hook this particular dash style dashboard up. You know, just like the Chevelle, this is my 69 Camaro. It's got an LS2 equipped. And if you're like me, when you buy a car for a project, I prefer not to have the engine transmission in it because I like to put my own stamp on it and personalize the car just for me. And you know, like that, that's what this hobby is all about. Making the car yours, making it what you want. You dream about it and you make it. So now, but when you get a, when you get a car, sometimes you see, you open up the, you open up the hood and 
you see wires all over the place. You got some wires, you know, all taped together, and some wires are just spliced, and you got other wires just hanging around, you know. So just take that equation out. And, you know, like, if you can, get yourself brand new wire harness on the whole car. Because it'll take that long to wire the whole car. And they even sell it in separate, you know, like, you got your intermediate wire, you got your real wire, you got your interior wire. So you can, you can buy it. You can buy the harness separate, the separate harnesses for the car. But it just makes it so much easier. And because the best part about them is they come labeled. And it's going to prevent troubles down the road because sometimes, you, get, you, you know, you're dealing with these wires that are, like, 35, 40, 45 years old. And, you know, why, why take a chance, especially if you're going this far? And what, the wire harnesses for the cars are very reasonably priced, so I definitely recommend if you, if you have the means, if you can, you know, get, get yourself, you know, like American Auto Wire, Street and Performance, whatever, you know, auto harness, well, American Auto Wire for the, for the, for the car harness, and uh, it, it's just that much easier. And like I said, they're labeled, so it takes the guesswork out of it. Now this, now we're sitting in the 1969 Camaro. Now, please, again, forgive me that the car is what I consider a Nessor. It's an N-E-S-O-R. And that stands for Never Ending State of Restoration. So, no matter how far you get with the car after the car's all finished, it's never finished. And we both, we all know this. You know, because there's always something new that's going to come out that you want to try or either something that you always want to do. So these cars, they're never ending. And that's part of the fun, you know. But anywho. This particular car has a dashboard where it's different than the Chevelle, whereas it doesn't have a circuit board in the back. So there's not a 12 volt, a 12 volt circuit, you know, like power going through all the all the uh, gauges at once from one circuit board. The 12 volt goes through each and every light and gauge. That what's it called? So it's separate. So there's 12, there's wires that are spliced that are that are daisy chain going to certain lights and everything. So now let's take a look at this. This is the this is the left hand pod in the '69 Camaro. There's there's no idiot light right there. There's just okay. Here's the lights. This is the indicator light. That's the left indicator light. You know. Then you got the fuel pressure. No, no I'm sorry, the fuel line. So if you're low on fuel, that light will show up. Uh, this is the emergency brake. Once you apply the emergency brake, that light shows up. I, I use that. Once you, uh, and this is the bright. So when you have your high beams on, that's what, uh, that's what uh, comes on. That light says bright. Now this is the cluster that we're dealing with. We're dealing with the right hand cluster. And uh, I already took it apart. And what it does is, the first light right here is for the generator, alternator, whatever. This one right here, is for the temperature so when you're low on temperature or high on temperature that light would show up in 1969 and this is the oil pressure this is the oil pressure uh, light again which is you know I, I'm not going to use this but I'm going to use this one for being my trouble code light and this of course is the right indicator light now like I told you before when you have an LS setup you should have several type of gauges and there they are now I'm, here's my bolt because like this car didn't have a volt meter, you know, tell me how volt, how many volts I have. I think it had an amp, but I'm not dealing with amps, I'm dealing with volts. This is my temperature, little gauge. This is my uh, my fuel my fuel pressure. Again, should always have a fuel pressure. And, of course, my oil pressure. And I pulled these wires down so I can work with them. But uh, this is my little pod. And you can get this pod for 69 Camaro from uh, American, not American, what is it? Um, uh, auto meter. They make the pod for this. And it's, it's very cool and it looks really beautiful in the car. All right, so now we're going to hook up the idiot light, or should I say the, the trouble code light, on my oil pressure. Now, this is the second way you can do it. You can go to AutoZone and pick up, this is what, this is what my idiot light was before, uh, my trouble code light. And you can pick this little wire up. It has two leads, one for power, one for negative. And it, it's about maybe $4. And what I did was I drilled a hole here and... I would stick it in there and it works fine it still works but the only problem is on a sunny day you can't really tell if this thing's on or when it or if it does come on it's not bright enough to like really hit you in the face so that's why i'm going to this one because no matter you drive and it's going to hit you in the face and i'm going to show you exactly how to hook this up now remember when we're talking 12 volts we're talking 12 volts crank on so that means the power come when the when the key's not in the car and the car's like in the off position there's no power when we're talking 12 volts, we're talking about when you turn the car on, the light, the power comes on. And when you turn it to start, the light stays on. And when it goes back to the on position, 
the power is still on. That's what we're talking about when we say 12 volts and crank. Okay, I finished hooking this up. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not. This wire is coming all the way from out the engine compartment. This is the oil pressure sending unit wire. I don't know if you can see it, but like I said, this is great because it's labeled. It says it right there, but it's a little blurry, but you can't see it. Now, this wire, you hook up to the brown wire coming off your computer, the MIL wire. That's, again, mal uh, malfunctioning indicator light wire, and you just tie this in. Now, with this harness, what you have to do is, remember, this type of uh, dashboard, it doesn't have that circuit. It doesn't have a circuit board in the back that, that brings power. So you're going to have to actually bring power to... If you don't have power going to it already, see, when I hooked this up, I didn't put power here because I, I knew I wasn't using the generator and the water temperature. So now I want to use the um, the oil pressure light as my as my idiot uh, slash trouble code light. And when it comes on, I have to supply power. So this wire right here is the one that goes just the oil pressure wire. And this one is the 12 volt wire. So now when I turn the key, that light should light up. So let's see if it happens. There it is. The light comes on along with the first trouble code light that I have, that I had. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back together and we're gonna test it out. Okay, I got the dashboard back together and I even installed the, the original mill light. So let's see if this, if this works. On position, mill lights on, mill lights on, check engine light, they're both working, they're both on, now they should go off once I start the car, here we go, there we go, both off. And that is how I hooked up my mill to work on this particular car. Now remember, if you have idiot lights, you could just find the negative wire off the idiot light and hook it up to the mill wire off of your computer. Now if, you, if you're if you rebuilding a harness, if you're rebuilding the harness, you have to find which which wire is the mill wire. But if you if you, if you you have like an aftermarket a, um, P, um, LS harness, It'll be a brown wire that comes right off the computer. You can't miss it, and it'll it'll probably say what wire it is in the brochure, in the pamphlet, or the write-up when it comes with, with with the harness. But that's pretty much it. And it's time, looking at the clock on the wall, or should I say ceiling, for me to head on out. I think I'm going to take a cruise in one of these cars, and um, it's a nice day, and enjoy myself. So next time we meet, please, as always, be easy, and I'll catch you guys a little later. Take care.